Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless america is in a spiritual battle between good and evil as we read in ephesians 6 12 where we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Let's bring in that Oklahoma State Superintendent who says uh, Satanists are welcome to go to hell. Ryan Walters, Mr. Superintendent, thank you. The Executive Director of the Satanic Temple said the following, quoting here, we are committed to offering compassionate guidance to students who come to us so that we can help make positive changes in their lives by listening to their needs and providing support. Kind of vague, what is their real goal? What, what's the deal here and would you allow them to go into schools? Yeah, you know, I'm not surprised that people that worship Satan lie. So uh, they are liars. What they're trying to do in worshiping Satan is destroy the lives of children, undermine the very Judeo-Christian values of this country, and destroy our schools. Satanism is not a religion. We will not allow them in our school. Our bill will not allow Satanists into our schools. It will only allow religions, religions that we have protected in this country since the outset of our founding. And so it's very clear Satanists want to destroy mm -hmm. families, want to destroy kids' lives by worshiping the devil. That's not a religion. We will not allow them in our schools. And it is interesting, Trace. We've had chaplains in the military. We've had chaplains in Congress. Under President Trump, you didn't see the Satanists believing they could actually inject themselves into schools. But under President Biden, he has really cleared the way where they, they feel very emboldened to try to get in there and influence our kids. And they are not going to send our kids to hell. Yeah, not only is it not a religion, it might be an anti-religion. The Satanic Temple mission says the following, provided religious exemption and legal protection against laws that unscientifically restrict people's reproductive autonomy, exposed harmful pseudoscientific practitioners in mental health care, organized clubs alongside other religious after-school clubs in schools besieged by proselytizing organizations and engaged in other advocacy in accordance with our tenants. I mean... Why is this happening? Why are these bills even coming up? You know, we, we want the influence of Christian ministers. We understand that Judeo-Christian values were a foundation of this country. And in the 1960s, the Supreme Court weaponized the federal government against Christians. We have allowed our schools to be state-sponsored centers of atheism. So we want our Christian communities, we want the Judeo-Christian values of our country to have influence in our schools. What we will not allow are Satanists to hijack these bills, Satanists to try to bully their way into our schools. And so we will stand firm against it. It's not a religion. The founders, I mean, Trace, you can go back and it shows you how the left has also taken history and warped it. The, the founders did not believe you were going to invite Satan into our public schools. What they wanted to do was protect the faith of our of our pe right. of our citizens to be able to practice their religious beliefs in school and tell the the foundation of our history, which is our Judeo-Christian values. Well, how about them watching a new show about an 18-year-old impregnated by Satan? That's Disney's latest project. They've agreed to stream the six-part German-produced series on Disney+. Plus. The show's name is Pauline. It's produced by the same people who created the Netflix show How to Sell Drugs Online Fast. Hey, I just wanted to check in and ask how you're doing. I mean, if it's actually you, Pauline. Do you think it's a good idea to um, stay in touch with Lucas? I'm not. I put an end to it. I'm pregnant. Well, he's the father. You are. No. You are. That's impossible. I can't have a child with you. What? Some things have been going on around me. <laughs> you okay? You okay? How can I explain this? You can't hide. My mother is the devil. What? That is the worst thing that could happen to this world. Is it like the exorcist? Do I need an exorcism now? I don't, I don't know either. We have to get rid of this damn thing. That's what's important here. I call it the infinite loop of pain. Isn't that sick? You have no idea who you're dealing with. Can you hear it? Pauline! The producers say Pauline is, quote, close to their hearts. They're thrilled that Disney loves the coming-of-age story as much as we do.
Movie Guide chairman and founder Ted Bear is calling on parents to petition Disney Plus to stop the release of Pauline on their platform. Bear wants to keep, quote, twisted and disturbing content from corrupting our children's values and beliefs. During the end times, the Bible says that wickedness and evil will run rampant all over the world. Jesus warned that by resisting these things that Christians would be hated by all nations. Jesus said the world hated him first so that we should expect that the world will hate us as well. Satan isn't masking his intentions anymore, is he? Battle lines are being drawn and people are choosing sides. If you know someone who doesn't know the Lord, tell them time is definitely running out for them to come to Jesus. Revelation 12:12. 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. A good indicator we are living in the last moments of human history is that Satan has infiltrated our society in every way possible. We must understand Satan hates us because we are created in the image of Almighty God. Satan wants not only to be like God, but wants to exalt himself above God, as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Satan has worked his way onto the TV screen, where he is portrayed as a fun and caring guy on the path of redemption, where women love him and men want to be him. To be a Christian today is to rebel against these vices and to speak out against the holly weird experience that is beginning to invade almost every aspect of our lives and society. Satan is busy deceiving mankind and mankind is falling for his deceptions. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Make no mistake about Satan. There is no redemption for him. His fate has been sealed, as we read in Revelation 20.10. The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan wants to take as many people to hell with him as possible. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21:11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. And in case you missed it, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds issued a disaster proclamation over the weekend for Cherokee County after bird flu was confirmed in a commercial turkey flock there. The proclamation will be active through July 2nd. Meanwhile, next generation mRNA vaccines are now in development to protect cows against the virus. The USDA is set to begin testing a new vaccine from University of Pennsylvania. Researchers in calves next month. The Federal Department of Health and Human Services has been talking to vaccine manufacturers about potentially developing mRNA bird flu vaccines for people as well. In Health Check, Penn Medicine says it's created a human bird flu vaccine on the same platform as its COVID-19 vaccine. The experimental mRNA vaccine protected lab animals from severe illness and death for at least a year. In fact, all the vaccinated animals survived infections while all the unvaccinated ones died. H5N1 rarely infects humans, 
but there's been heightened concern amid a current outbreak circulating in birds and cattle in the U.S. Meantime, the third human case associated with the outbreak of bird flu has been reported from a farm worker in Michigan. This worker reported experiencing respiratory symptoms before testing positive last Thursday. Experts say this is tied to a dairy outbreak. And for more on this now, joining me is Dr. Rick Bright. He's a virologist and the former head of the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. Dr. Bright, thank you so much for being here. You were just out with an op-ed on Sunday that got our attention. The title of it is Why the New Human Case of bird flu is so alarming. So why do we all need to be paying attention to the bird flu? Yeah, this bird flu virus has really taken hold and spreading across our country, and it's been in poultry for a couple of years. The last few months, we've seen it infect a, a wide variety of, of dairy cattle across our country. And the more dairy cattle that we have infected with this, we have more people exposed to the cows and the milk that's infected with this virus. And we're starting to see more cases now uh, people who work with these dairy cows get infected with this virus. The first two infections over the last couple of months have been mild with a bit of an eye infection. This last case we saw last week reported from Michigan, however, changed to a respiratory infection. So we believe the virus is adapting to people and is eventually going to take hold and can potentially spread person to person. Does the fact that it is those respiratory symptoms mean that it could spread more easily among humans as well? Absolutely. I mean, if you imagine there's an eye infection or a cough or a sneeze and more people can transmit a virus through a cough or a sneeze than they can through eye secretions. And so the more we can expel and expectorate this virus into the air through droplets, of course, the more chance it has to spread to other people. The CDC still says the threat to the public remains low. Do you agree with that? I think to the general public, as long as you're not drinking raw milk or coming in contact with these infected cattle, you're probably pretty safe still. But if you're working on one of these dairy farms or you're in that process chain where you're either working in the pasteurization facility or you're working in a slaughterhouse that is having to, to process these infected cows, your risk is actually pretty high. And the, and the CDC has put out guidelines on how to protect yourself. But the general public, stay away from sick and dead animals and don't drink raw milk and you're pretty good for now. If you were head of the CDC, would you be doing anything differently? Absolutely. I would be doing a lot more testing. We are flying blindly right now. We don't want to be alarmist here, but just so if you could give us uh, what you think would be both the best case scenario and the worst case scenario with the spread of bird flu. Well, the best case scenario is, you know, we've been tracking this for 27 years now as it's jumped in a few people here and there. We've never seen it in this many mammals, domestic mammals before, where there's a chance we can manage it and control it. It will burn out and go away in the next few months. Best case. Worst case scenario, it will continue to evolve and infect more cows. Matter of fact, the USDA just reported 13 more herds across the U.S. over the weekend and more cows infected or more people infected. Once this virus begins to infect more people, it will adapt. It can spread widely person to person. It can cause a lot of severe illness. Right now, over the last 27 years, about 52% of the people known to be infected with this virus have died. And so it can be really lethal. We don't really have vaccines ready for it yet. And the antiviral drug arsenal we have is very limited. Worst case scenario, it can flash like wildfire. We're not ready for it. It can cause a lot of devastation, much worse than what we saw with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And just to get some clarity for our viewers, doctor, I think people, some people might hear of animals that are getting sick and start to have some concerns about whether the food they're eating is safe. Is there any reason to be concerned with that? You know, we haven't really been able to confirm that. So we're trying to track to see how these cows initially got infected with this virus. Was it a wild bird that landed in the, in the food supply or in the water supply? Was it something mixed in the food supply that was used to feed animals on a particular farm? We don't have those answers right now. Right now, we do know that it is spreading really well among the dairy cattle, and it's jumping from dairy cattle to other mammals, cats, and alpacas, and others in the area. So we just need to make sure that if you see a sick animal now, it's really important to keep your distance, call for help, don't expose yourself. Jesus said he would return when our days parallel the days of Noah, as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. 
and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Noah, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 6, 1 and 2. Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Who were the sons of God who took wives for themselves of all whom they chose? We find the answer in the book of Job. Job 1.6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Job 2.1 Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. The sons of God in Genesis 6.2 are fallen angels, who married and produced offspring with human women, in order to try and destroy humanity by preventing the Savior Jesus Christ from being born. Genesis 6.4 there were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men, who were of old, men of renown. Who were the giants that the daughters of men bore to the sons of God? The giants were half-human, half-fallen angel hybrids known as the Nephilim. Just as in the days of Noah, when fallen angels mated with human women, and the result was a half-angel, half-human hybrid known as the Nephilim, many end-time scholars today believe Jesus will return when human genome is again being tampered with. Are we seeing any signs of genetic tampering in humans today? The United States government is working to fund a human bird flu vaccine trial for Moderna, according to a report by the Financial Times. Just this week, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds issued a disaster proclamation for Sioux County, Iowa, after it was revealed that more than 4 million chickens would have to be killed after a bird flu outbreak at a farm. Scientists say they're looking to develop a human mRNA bird flu vaccine because those vaccines can be rapidly produced and tailored to the circulating strain of the virus. Satan and the fallen angels not only corrupted human DNA, but also corrupted all flesh, as we read in Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Once again, Bible prophecy is exactly in line with world events. Do not be deceived. The sin of humanity has cursed this world with sickness and death. No technology can ever change that. No genetic alteration can bring forgiveness. Only faith in Jesus Christ can. Satan wants to seduce humanity into thinking they can become perfected, godlike beings who can live forever all based on their own ingenuity and strength. Also, the devil can corrupt the image of man further and bring them into rebellion against God and ensure damnation for as many people as possible. This corrupted world is going to end, and everything with it. But believers in Jesus Christ will not only live to see a new earth, they will receive a new, perfect, incorruptible body. We do not have to seek genetic perfection because Jesus has already lived a perfect life for us. It just takes faith in him as the Savior who died for your sins to receive eternal life, forgiveness in one day, and eternal body as well. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-55 Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Verse 51 tells us we shall not all sleep, meaning we shall not all die. There is going to be a whole generation of believers who are going to do an end run on the grave. We will be caught up in the twinkling of an eye. We will receive immediately an immortal, imperishable, and corruptible body we will be caught up to be with the Lord. At the same time, those who've died, who are dead in the Lord, their bodies will be raised, and the Lord will bring their perfected spirits with them, and they'll be reunited, and their bodies will be changed. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-18 For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, 
that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Sad news for Israel. The IDF announced four more hostages have died in Gaza. This as the U.S. is calling on both sides to agree to a ceasefire. Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu is holding fast to his government's pledge to keep fighting until Hamas is destroyed. Now the U.S. is turning to the United Nations to increase the pressure. The Israeli military confirmed that four more hostages died in captivity in Gaza. Three of them were seen alive in a Hamas propaganda video released earlier. Their loved ones were killed a few months ago during Hamas captivity in Gaza and their bodies are still being held by Hamas. We assess that the four of them were killed while together in the area of Khan Yunis during our operation there against Hamas. The Biden administration claims the remaining hostages could be freed and the war ended if Hamas and Israel would agree to its ceasefire proposal. They say the IDF's war on Hamas has so weakened the terrorist group that it doesn't have the capability to launch deadly attacks like the one on October 7th. Endless conflict in Gaza in pursuit of some idea of total victory is not going to make Israel safer. Israelis say the pitched battles that still continue in Gaza and the ongoing rocket launches prove that Hamas is far from defeated. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejects any plan that would end the war before destroying Hamas's ability to govern Gaza and strike the Jewish nation. He maintains he's sticking to his war cabinet's goal from the start, no peace till Hamas has been eliminated and all the hostages freed. We insist that we complete both this and that. It's part of the outline. It's not something I'm adding now. It's not something I'm adding because I was pressured in the coalition. It's something we unanimously agreed on in the war cabinet with one voice. Meanwhile, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations is urging the U.N. Security Council to support the three-phased plan announced by President Biden to end the war. Israeli commentator Carolyn Glick tells CBN News it's an end run by the Biden administration. So this is a way of going around the Israeli government, going around the Israeli people, going around the American people uh, to try to, to compel Israel to capitulate through the United Nations. They did the same thing in 2016 with the nuclear deal that uh, President Obama uh, finalized with Iran that gave Iran an open path to a nuclear arsenal. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's foreign policy is pretty simple. If you bless Israel, you will be blessed. If you curse Israel, you will be cursed. Forest fires continue to rage across northern Israel. They've reached residential areas in border towns and villages, and several homes have been evacuated. The emergency services say the blaze is now under control. The fires broke out shortly after drone strikes fired by Hezbollah from neighboring Lebanon on Monday. Hot and dry weather conditions then causing them to spread quickly. Israeli authorities have vowed to continue their fight against the militant group. We have finished a security assessment and visit in Kiryat Shmona. I think it's amazing to see firefighters who have sacrificed so much and policemen who are here 24-7. Now the IDF's role is simply to destroy Hezbollah. In retaliation, the Israeli army announced it had carried out airstrikes against what it said were Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon. 
Israel and Hezbollah continue to exchange cross-border fire amid soaring temperatures, some reaching over 40 degrees Celsius this week. The violence has forced tens of thousands to flee on both sides over the past few months, since the 7th of October. And as the rhetoric escalates and attacks intensify, many fear the conflict will turn into a full-blown war. Israeli ground forces even preparing for a potential invasion of Lebanon. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Hezbollah and Israel continue to exchange fire on the northern border. Moreover, Syria has accused Israel of carrying out an attack in the city of Hayyan that killed at least 12 people. As Hezbollah rockets continue to slam Israel's northern border, IDF fighter jets struck a Hezbollah launcher and military structures in the areas of Nikora, Marun al and Khayyam in southern Lebanon. The move comes after a drone fired by Hezbollah fell in the Israeli coastal city of Nariya on Sunday, causing a fire but no injuries. The military said in a statement that it tried unsuccessfully to intercept the drone. Several people were killed in suspected Israeli airstrikes near Aleppo, according to Syria's defense ministry. Reports indicate that the overnight attack targeted a copper plant in Haiyan, north of the city. Video purportedly showing the aftermath revealed large flames shooting out of a building. Israel has not commented on the strike. Israel has conducted hundreds of strikes in Syria since the civil war began, mainly to prevent weapons transfers to Hezbollah and to stop Iranian fighters from establishing a presence near Israel's border. Aleppo, however, is on the opposite side of Syria from Israel, making the strike further than most previous attacks attributed to the country, although Jerusalem is believed to have ordered strikes in the region before. The last suspected strike in Syria was on May 29th, an attack blamed for the death of a girl in Banyas, a coastal city. Hezbollah has been exchanging near daily fire with the Israeli army since the day after the Hamas attack on October 7th. In the early stages of the war, Hezbollah mainly used anti-tank missiles fired from southern Lebanon toward northern Israeli settlements. However, Israel's Channel 12 reports that Hezbollah has since upgraded its tactics, now using explosive drones, suicide UAVs, and Birkin rockets. In recent months, Hezbollah claims to have launched dozens of Birkin rockets towards Israel, primarily targeting military sites such as the Birnit Post and the Gibor Camp in Kiryat Shmona. The documented destruction of these military facilities shows the significant damage a single rocket can cause. Developed with Iranian assistance, the Birkin rocket was first used in the Syrian civil war. Since then, Hezbollah has increased its use and improved its capabilities. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Russia pummeled Ukraine's energy infrastructure with a large scale drone and missile attack, injuring at least 19 people. The Ukrainian military reported it downed 35 of the 53 missiles launched at targets across the country overnight as well as 46 out of 47 attack drones. 12 people, including eight children, were hospitalized after a strike hit Kharkiv, according to a local official. The strikes were part of a series of sustained attacks by Russia against Ukraine's power grid, which has been ongoing since March. In response to the strikes, Ukrainian President Zelensky reiterated Kiev's need for additional air defense systems from its Western allies. Luke 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. The inter-Korean military agreement dates back to friendlier times on the Korean peninsula. 
It was signed at the height of summit diplomacy in 2018 on a landmark visit to North Korea by the former South Korean president. We lived together for 5,000 years and have been separated for 70 years. I propose today to completely end the 70-year hostility. The two sides promised to de-escalate tensions on their shared border by limiting military activity close to it. But as North Korea resumed its missile tests, South Korea has responded with shows of force. And the release of hundreds of trash-filled balloons by the North in the past week marks a further decline. Six years on, with relations having steadily deteriorated, it seems the balloon launches were too much for South Korea. But in reality, the inter-Korean military agreement was virtually defunct in any case. North Korea had resumed artillery drills close to the border and put back in place guard posts and landmines in violation of the agreement. Uh, almost all, I mean 90 percent of military agreement already been violated. So just, to, just keeping it in place uh, does not mean anything. And South Korea has not ruled out resuming the highly effective practice of broadcasting propaganda by loudspeakers across the border, a major escalation that would further anger the North. Food and medicine from the UN's World Food Programme is finally reaching the Haitian capital. Port-au-Prince's airport, shut down since March, has been reopened, allowing supplies to be distributed across the city. The roads in and out of Port-au-Prince are controlled by uh, armed groups. The port has been closed for a long time and was looted. And the airport was closed. So eff effectively, Port-au-Prince for the past uh, few months has been an island. So it's really important for WFP and other humanitarians to be able to bring supplies into the city to run essential programs. People in Cité Soleil, the city's biggest slum, were facing catastrophic levels of hunger. But the UN's food agency says that it's been able to deliver more than 600 tons of rice, beans and vegetable oil to more than 90,000 in the past month. But that might not be enough. Eugenie Pierre-Charles is 70 years old and says her vegetable stall was destroyed during the violence. Sometimes I'm very hungry, so I ask people for a bite, but they humiliate me. I've never had to beg. I always managed to run my business. It really hurts. I had my work before, but the gangs forced me out. Haiti has been gripped by violence since February, when armed gangs launched a campaign to remove then-Prime Minister Ariel Henry. About 5 million Haitians, or nearly half of the population, face acute hunger. A million and a half are on the verge of starvation. The Haitian people, uh, right now they're hungry, they're desperate, they're going to take the food aid, they're going to take uh, you know, whatever security can be provided, but it doesn't solve the underlying problem of the hunger, desperation, and lack of services that the people suffer under. Gary Conil, a longtime UN development expert who was recently appointed the country's new prime minister, arrived in Haiti on Saturday. He faces a monumental task in a country that remains on the brink of total disaster. Now at six, a horrifying scene. Evidence markers showing the aftermath of a street party turned crime scene in Akron. 25 people shot, one dead. This morning, a big reward for any leads on suspects. There are people out there who know the person or persons involved, and I implore you to speak up. 25 people were shot during a birthday party on the city's east side. One of those victims, a 27-year-old man, was killed. Police responded to several 911 calls for reports of shots fired and multiple injuries. We have learned overnight that it was likely a drive-by shooting, likely an assault rifle was used in this shooting, but still more questions about how many shooters, were there multiple shooters, who and why this all happened. Obviously someone, you know, saw the chance to come and just, you know, wreck things and, and hurt people. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5 
But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.